take a video of my home theater setup. I just updated a bunch of things. So, um, well, the main thing is the actual uh, display. It's uh, been updated. So, let me show you here. So, this is a LG C1. This is the 77 inch. I had the 65 inch B1 here uh, in my room. Uh, and this is my family room. And so it was a case where um, I lost my movie room. You may have seen those videos and those pictures because of COVID. And it became a office um, space for myself and my wife when we were working at home. It still continues to be that. So I recently sold my projector. I'm selling my screen. I'm going to hold on to my audio because it is for my uh, computer setup. But in any case, that's what happened. So that inspired me to finish out this room uh, to make it more of the media center. So this was what we called theater two, where again, family room, we watch television, football, those type of things down here, gatherings with people here. Uh, and then the other was more of theater one, which was the IMAX piece that we uh, affectionately called it. Um, 100 inch screen, uh, projector, 4K, uh, you know, 500 watts of sound in a relatively small room. So it really, really gave you that theater effect. So um, what I've done is again, upgraded this to a 77. Now with the size of my room, because this space is from the screen wall to wall from here to the uh, sofa, the sitting area is um, 17 and a half feet. So that means that I needed to get something that was a little bit more substantial than the 65 inch that I had here to really make a more immersive experience. So I was looking at 85 inches or, or bigger. I was going to, at first I decided I was going to get a projector, a short throw projector, throw it down here next to the uh, center channel and get a 100 to 120 inch screen, which which would be about where it should be for this space. Uh, the problem with that is that um, to really make it effective, particularly in a room where I have that many windows, and then I have light coming in from here also and from the kitchen, um, I would have to get an ALR. ALR that size, you're looking at adding another three to $400 on top of what you have already. So because of that, I decided uh, I'll go with the television. So I started looking at 85 inches, um, like uh, Sony's and Samsung, particularly this time of year. It is the holidays, uh, Thanksgiving just passed. So there were a lot of great deals that were coming along on those in the good two to two thousand dollar range which is awesome for 85 inches of quality uh, screen but um again this is an oled and my 65 inch b1 from lg was an oled so i found myself gravitating back toward this um, type of screen now so they gave me a choice between either the 83 or the 77 the 77 was always what was in my heart um, but the 83 a was hard to get B is five grand. So, uh, I just didn't want to put that type of scratch in today for that type of, uh, for that type of show. So I opted for the uh, 77 inch as well in this space or currently in this space. So, um, once I got that, I got it set up as you can see, uh, or you could see earlier before it went to sleep. Uh, the picture is beautiful. It's immersive. Um, it is a great compromise. So even though it probably isn't ideal screen size for this type of room, um, the quality of the picture that, uh, that you receive from this screen well outweighs that with the size improvement that I get. Because again, it still is 12 inches bigger than the other screen that I had here. And it is a noticeable difference for most people who came in the room, particularly during Thanksgiving, uh, was the first time I really got to show it off. Um, I just got it earlier this week. Uh, Thanksgiving, I had a bunch of people over, family, and uh, it, it was a deal breaker for them, or it was uh, something that was noticeable. I'll say it that way. Uh, we put on the uh, King Richard movie, which was excellent. Serena Williams and uh, Serena Venus Williams' father, Richard Williams, quite misunderstood gentleman who uh, really sacrificed a lot of his daughters. Great movie. Will Smith's performances, superb. The girls who play the... Uh, 
uh, the daughters who play Serena, or play all the daughters actually did great performances, particularly Serena and Venus, and I think her name is Anjani. Um, she was the uh, mom, um, played Osanine. Um, uh, Williams, the mom, she, they were all excellent. It's a great movie, great story. Uh, John Blumenthal, excellent, great movie. Anyway, enough about that. I threw that on the screen, which we have been watching football for most of the day, uh, because there was a triple header. The whole room stopped. Everybody in this room basically stopped what they were doing and immediately sat down to watch the movie. You have people who had to leave, who sat and waited to leave uh, for prior uh, prior schedule engagements so that they can sit and watch this. So it spoke for itself. Um, so since then, I've been tweaking the sound. It's one of the things I'm working on because I, I have a 7.1 system in this room. I've had that for several years now, but really haven't really peaked the potential of it. Uh, for several reasons. I mean, equipment is equipment. So the, the television I had here before was older and it didn't really give that type of uh, sound to the bar or to the uh, the receiver um, that would give it the type of quality. Ever since I put up the, uh, the LG, because the LG is capable of uh, controlling and, and, and communicating with the directly through the sound um, receiver, uh, Dolby Atmos and DTS and all of those type of things, uh, DTSX um, codecs that come through. Being that that's the case with these, it was really, really a great, um, great investment. So um, I guess I can switch the camera and show you guys here. So running it all through my Sony, and of course that's my Comcast cable box. So originally, uh, my first real 5.1 sound system was the Sir and Vegas um, system. So I have, you can see throughout the house, you'll see those pieces of Sir and Vega. That's my center channel. Um, again, Sir and Vega, because of me coming up in the audio, uh, the auto world, auto audio world, I was very... Uh, familiar with them, really trusted them, and got it at a great price at the time, and it really has shined through its quality. You know, it's hard plastics and steel, so uh, it's lasted me a long time, haven't had any issues. Of course, then I have the uh, Sony DH770 as my tuner, and that tuner is excellent. It does all of the things and the most important thing again it's a 7.1 it accepts the uh arc standard uh, e arc standard from the television so that the quality matches up there um when it comes down and again that's the way i have it running now is through the uh the uh, arc which is giving great sound i was running optical but art gives you a higher level of quality. Again, going back to the Sermon Vega, this is the uh, subwoofer. It's a eight inch, I believe, not a 10, a 10 or eight inch, but it puts out a lot of sound in here. I am, that's the next step for me or the final step at this point is to get a second subwoofer that's a little bit bigger. And then what you can do is it allows me to balance the bass by doing that so i have the subwoofer with this eight inch that can handle the higher ends up to about 135 hertz so somewhere in that 90 to 100 uh, 135 hertz and then i'll get a larger one and put on the other side here and that guy will run um, those lower hertz because it has a larger resonator and allows it to reach uh the lower um, hertz such as that 10 to um, 80 range that you want to get so between the two it'll get a not just a good feel but it'll actually balance out the bass so that this one isn't vibrating too roughly trying to handle multiple frequencies uh, multiple spectrum of the frequencies where it can handle the high end of the bass the low end of the bass will be here and then of course some of that will be handled by these these are my polk audio uh, towers and I have a couple here. And as you see, I have them angled about 30 degrees facing back to the viewing area. And if we swing over here, the rest of my setup are matched with the uh, Sermon Vegas 
here and I have one there and I got one there and there's one right behind that curtain. So it's a total of 7.1. Again, going to a 7.2 eventually by taking another subwoofer and putting it there. This receiver has the capability of handling that. Um, so I don't know if that's going to translate to sound when I uh, turn this back on, but looking at my eye, let me turn this light off. And the pixel quality that you get coming to your actual eye from an OLED surface, it's impeccable. Again, I, I don't know what else I would do. I've, I've had LCDs. I've had uh, projectors for a long time. I've set these up, um, these audios up both at work and, and for myself for a while. But having that type of quality, bar none, that's the first thing. Second thing is if you can afford to do so, Get a, a full system as opposed to having uh, a sound bar. Sound bars are great if you don't have the space. Uh, they can mimic a lot of it, but they won't give you the same quality as a real theater. You don't see sound bars in movie theaters. It just reason is is that you can only manipulate the sound so much before you do that. The only other thing I'm thinking of doing is getting a couple of actual uh, top firing speakers to sit on top of the towers so that those towers can fire up to give us the atmos that's coming down and then as opposed to having an envelope the sound will have a dome of sound that comes from all different directions so uh, again i don't know if this is going to come through in the phone as well as this being received but one other thing i do want to point out as i look at this is that, you know, looking at it from the phone perspective, you see reflection in the screen. My eye does not perceive that same level of uh, reflection that's being shown on the screen. And that's an important thing to note because particularly with LG, they use a gloss um, finish on their screen as opposed to the Sony's, which has a matted finish. But there is a coating uh, on top of a UV coating, like on most screens, but theirs has a, a reflection absorption technology embedded in that, the chemicals that they use for it. And because of it, the eye doesn't perceive those, uh, particularly when there's stuff on the screen, it just doesn't perceive those reflections. Because I hear a lot from people, well, number one, that it's not bright enough. Listen, I'm in a room with all of these windows and this thing is plenty bright. Uh, now, we do have a concern with reflection because of all of the windows, but it is bright enough that it can overpower most of those reflections most times. Do we still have some issues? Of course, because it is uh, a glossy mirror. If I turn this thing off, you can shave in it. But when, they're, when these pixels are lit, it is amazing. The other thing is the level of contrast that you get from uh, from a OLED, just the fact that looking at his ski mask and actually looking at this guy's mask over here and uh, understanding the level of the range there, the dynamic range between that black and his um, tanned skin um, it is amazing when you look at it from that perspective. But then... You're only getting half of the experience if you don't invest in your sound. So you have to invest in the sound. This setup didn't cost a whole lot of money, and it's something that it took time. I built it over time. So my recommendation is to, again, that Seren Vega was a kit that I bought that was a 5.1 kit I bought years ago. And then from there, you just make sure that you have a receiver that's capable of giving you those extra channels, such as the uh, extra subwoofer for the .2, the uh, extra speakers if you want to do uh, 7.1 grow from 5.1 to 7.1 grow from that to 9.1 this is only capable of 7.1 um, but having a, this is fully capable of doing 7.2 it also has the calibration that the Onkyo I had before this have a calibration microphone that you place in the middle of the room and it can do room correction um, it really is a, a great investment and again um, once you do it over time just buy the kit then get the to get the receiver, buy a kit, and then uh, meaning the 5.1 kit, get an extra subwoofer at some point, get a couple of tower uh, speakers in there, and then over time you'll see that you actually have uh, a, a movie quality, uh, theater quality um, 
um, set up inside your home, uh, particularly with uh, things still going on. There's a new variant of COVID out there. Uh, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm about to get my booster, but being able to uh, sit at home and relax with my family, watch uh, the latest movies whenever they're available, um, sit down with family uh, and watch a movie, watch the game um, television, whether it be basketball or football or soccer, uh, you know, watching television shows. See, for a lot of folks, you know, they may drink, they may smoke to try to me. I watch television. That's the sad vice of mine, but that's my thing is I uh, grew up as one as a kid of the nineties. So television is my thing or the eighties. So television is my thing. So that's kind of what I like to do. So this setup for me really, uh, has reached, uh, uh, higher quality. So I'm going to turn my movie back on and let you guys get back to what you were doing. But I just thought I'd share uh, my theater setup.